We have already seen one of the techniques for exporting relational data into RDF, the direct mapping approach. In this lesson, we will see the basic characteristics of the W3C R2RML recommendation. As already discussed, the input for R2RML is additional, is uh, even more than what we had for direct mapping. First of all, we have the database schema and the data, but we also have normally target ontologies and mappings between the database and the target ontologies in R2RML. The output will be exactly the same, an RDF graph that will be transformed uh, or that will be uh, available for loading it into a Sparkle endpoint, into a triple store. Let's see how can we represent the data that we had already and the direct mapping approach into R2RML. This is the example that we used in the previous lesson. First of all, we have to consider that there are many different mapping alternatives. First of all, we could consider that there is one uh, table that is transformed completely into one concept. This is what we had already in the direct mapping approach. The same would apply exactly for attributes where each of the columns were transformed into a specific property. However, there could be many other cases. For instance, we may be interested in having a subset of the columns uh, of the table to be exported as a concept. We may be interested in having a SQL query that defines how we generate a concept from some of the rows from that table, or we may even have to generate uh, this kind of data from uh, different types of uh, transformations that we could do. At the same time, a table could give us several concepts, and this is very typical from one-to-one -one relationships. Finally, whenever we have our columns, the columns may be transformed during the process of uh, the generation of the value that we want to export, and we could even have the possibility of merging the data from two columns. So there are many other different options than the ones that we were exploring in the direct mapping approach. When we are referring to R2RML, basically we talk about triples maps, and those ones are going to refer to logical tables or views, then we will have the way to generate the subject maps, predicate maps, and object maps. And finally, we will be able to specify the joins that we are going to be doing uh, in between tables. Let's start with an example of how all these elements are described in RDF and how we can actually describe the transformations that we want to provide. This is an example of a direct mapping expressed as R2RML. That is, what we are doing is representing whatever we did already automatically with direct mapping, but in this case with explicit R2RML mappings. What do we have over here? We have a triples map where we are specifying our logical table, that is, what is being mapped. Then we are specifying how the subject of the triples, of the RDF triples, are going to be generated. As we can see over here, we are specifying the URI of how persons are going to be generated and the RDF type that they are going to have. This is what we have uh, in the subject map. And finally, we have the predicate object maps where we are specifying, in this case, how we are generated the names of the persons from the column name. Yeah? This is how to generate the predicate and the object. So let's go a little bit further uh, with examples on what is being mapped. In this case, what we are mapping is the table name person, the subject URI, as we have described over here, and finally, this RDF type where we are specifying the class URI, the predicate URI that we are going to be generating for the predicate object maps, and finally, the columns that we are going to use for the object literals or resources whenever they are to be uh, URIs. Uh, this is just an example. Obviously, we could just change all these templates that we have been generated in order to refer to our own URIs, not the ones that would be generated directly from the direct mapping. So this is what we call customized subject URIs. And in this case, as we can see in the example, we are still using the www.example.com uh, to start the URI, but now we are generating the URIs differently using the ID as a way to uh, generate that part of the URI that is different. At the same time, Instead of just selecting a general class, as we were doing before, which was reflecting the table name, in this case we are using a very well-known concept from a well-known ontology like FOAF, which will be seen in one of the lectures uh, afterwards uh, for this course. And finally, 
we will have also sorry we will have also the possibility of specifying fob name as a customized property name so in this case what we are generating is something more expressive and something that doesn't reflect especially or specifically how our tables are represented in the relational database the last example that we are going to use is this one where we may be interested in just selecting only a part of the table that we want to export. This is the case for person, and let's imagine that we have a column that specifies the gender of the person. So we will have females and males. What we want to generate in RDF is just women, data about women. And so we have something in an ontology that describes women, okay, that's the class woman. And what we want to generate is person one which is of RDF type woman and as we were doing before we want to specify the fob name uh, to be Alice that is the value of the column uh, name how do we do this? well basically what we have to do is to generate what we call an R2RML view which is no more than a SQL query that we are uh, evaluating over the table in order to generate the rows that we are interested in in this case we are interested in those rows where the gender is female. This would be the way to represent this R2RML mapping. As you can see, instead of just using the table name as we were doing before, we are specifying the query that we have just uh, described in the slide uh, before, uh, where we are specifying that we want to select the IDs and names from the table person where the gender is female. This will ensure that this triples map is only applicable to those cases that we have exported as a result of evaluating this query.